LeBron James. LeBron James is in the building. LeBron James. The person with two capital letters and a first name. You can't make this up. LeBron James. You know, I was talking to Lamar Odom this weekend. Spent a lot of time with L.O. this weekend. Happy birthday to Lamar Odom yesterday. was his birthday. Turned 43 years old. Really cool dude. A mother giant. The dude is like nine feet tall. I don't know if you've ever stood next to a dude that was like 6'10", 6'11". Dudes is giants. I could imagine that that's what the Bible was talking about. Like, there were giants in our days. Dudes is probably huge. I don't know. But he was a really cool guy. And for the bag chasers, you'll get the whole interview within the next couple days. And a Patreon exclusive video today giving you the updates. Um, But one of the things that he said specifically was the brotherhood in the NBA. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about Brittany Griner. We talked about Kyrie Irving. We talked about Kanye West. We talked about um, heckling fans. We talked about his lifestyle. We talked about money. We talked about a lot of things. But one of the things that he spoke about specifically was, oh, oh, y'all going to like this. He talked about what really happens in these offices with the cheerleaders. Yo, shout out to Lamar Odom. He said, oh, and uh, shout out to Black Gold Moolah says, uh, congrats, Anton Bag Chaser, stand up. Bag Chaser, stand up. I appreciate you, big dog. We talked about a lot of stuff, and he talked about the brotherhood in the NBA, which is really wild, right? Because as I sit and I look at Kyrie Irving's situation and LeBron James's willingness to trade on his brother in order to preserve a bag, it's amazing because you have to start wondering, is it really even a brotherhood to begin with? Is it really even a brotherhood to begin with? Now, a lot of you that have not been living under a rock are familiar with what happened with Kyrie Irving last week, right? Y'all are familiar with what happened with Kyrie Irving last week? Let me give you a little bit of an update. So we know that Ye had been dealing with what he had been dealing with. And then we also know that Kyrie had tweeted something of a movie that's on Amazon Prime. Nobody is calling for the cancellation of Amazon or Amazon Prime because y'all need them packages. Nobody calling for the can- cancellation of Jeff Bezos. But they want to go after the lower hanging fruit, the people that they feel like they can identify with and that they can reach out and touch. You don't believe that you can truly reach out and touch, touch Be- Jeff Bezos. But Jeff Bezos, is uh, he even traveling into outer space specifically. But no matter how much money that Kyrie makes, y'all feel like y'all can tap into him. Shout out to Keep It Techie, my guy. Says, uh, morning, Anton. Looking forward to interviewing you this weekend. Enjoy the game. You drop daily. Thank you, my friend. I will be um, interviewing on Keep It Techie this weekend, so make sure y'all tap into that channel. Uh, You know what I do. You know I turn up on all platforms that I'm on, so shout out to y'all. Shout out to the bag chasers. Keep it techie is a bag chaser. And he said, Anton, I want to, I want to do an interview with you. You know what I said to Rita? Set it up. Set it up. If you're a bag chaser, I got to hold my people down. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's get into what LeBron James said specifically about Kyrie. And then we're going to transition into the Jalen Rose conversation. Uh, I'm enjoying this already. I'm enjoying it. I can tell you this. It's simple. Um, me personally, I don't condone any hate um, to any kind, to any race, um, to Jewish communities, to black communities, to Asian communities. Um, you guys know where I stand. And um, it's part of the reason why I didn't air the shop episode, why we kicked that. It's the reason that he didn't air and he kicked that shop episode. Let's. Let's take that into consideration for a second. What happened to the NBA being a brotherhood? What happened to the NBA being a brotherhood? So you're telling me that, because listen, I have a long memory. You know, I remember when LeBron James, let me eat my 100K cupcake. Where you get this from, girl? You got a paper towel in here so I can put this uh, trophy on it? I remember when LeBron James was calling for 
uh, and supporting the Black Lives Matters organization during the pandemic. Practically made everybody protest, walk out. They were moving in solidarity when it came to supporting an organization that actually was the worst for black people. I never seen LeBron James come back to the front of the congregation. <sighs> we gonna mind this out today. I never seen LeBron James come back to the front of the congregation and say that I was wrong about supporting an organization that was actually worse for black people that was not in their best interest. I never seen him say it. I never seen him say it. The whole NBA organization brought the NBA during the pandemic down to his knees because they wanted to make a point. You know, Charleston White spoke on this. For those of you that are familiar with the, the video or, you know, a lot of the stuff that went viral that Ye even tweeted out itself, Charleston White actually spoke on this. He said, if we all stuck together, and I'm not even just talking about black people, I'm just talking about culturally. If we all st stuck together, everybody would be forced to listen to us. Every, you cannot stop. You know what makes me so powerful? You know what makes me so powerful? What makes me so powerful is my army. That's what makes the United States of America so powerful. Everybody keeps talking about, well, they put so much money into the military. Well, the fact that we have the greatest military on earth is what makes us powerful. It's what makes us able to impose our will on other countries and it makes them think twice about doing anything in other countries that we may or may not support because you know it's going to be painful on the other side of that. So you're going to have to be willing to die in order to be able to go against me because my army is just as fervent and is just as, as militant as I am about making sure that we, we deal with problems. Listen, I'm going to tell you, my bag chasers and my army, they so, they so trigger happy when it come to getting at you. I'll be telling them, I said, listen, don't block them. Don't block everybody. You know what I'm saying? They just had a little bit of an opinion that's different than mine, but don't block them. We got to bring them back into the fold. You know what I'm saying? We got to get them together. Don't block them. But what makes you tough is that you got an army. And so I remember when they brought the NBA down to his knees and forced me to even cancel my season tickets before I reinstated because I got more insight and information from, from, you know, the ownership group and my representative and all of that other type of stuff. And it's funny because... Remember when the guy from the Houston Rockets said that, yo, what's going on with the Chinese people imposing their will on the Hong Kong and, you know, taking control over that? And then the guy at the Houston Rockets got fired and they, they attacked that and China, the Chinese people. And then LeBron James was quiet. He was quiet as a little mouse. He ain't have nothing to say. When they said that that bag, that Chinese bag, is, is, is on the line, big dog. Uh-huh. Let's continue. You know, out of the archives, because it was hate conversation going on there. Um, and I don't represent that. Um, you know, uh, there's no place in this world for it. But nobody can, can benefit from that. Unless it happens to white people or people over in Hong Kong. Or one is being reversed on people like Kanye and Kyrie Irving, who was supposed to be your brother. Because nobody is saying that Kanye or Kyrie is saying anything wrong or that's not true. They don't like who they saying it to. And let me tell you, the fastest way to be able to get to a man, a black man specifically, because it ain't all cultures. It's not all cultures. This cupcake, this 100K cupcake, it tastes good. I'm going to tell you what uh, Lamar Odom, no, don't give me another one. Lamar Odom, he, he described a feeling, and y'all going to have to tap into the Patreon to be able to see this. He described a feeling that comes along with the first time that you do this one activity in particular. He said it's, it's like an internal orgasm. This feels like an internal orgasm right here. You know what I'm saying? But how quick do you turn on your brother? Because the one way that you can get to a man, you know how to kill a man? 
Want me to tell you how you can kill a man's spirit, soul, body, and everything that exists within him? Tap his pockets. Lamar said that. I'm going to give Lamar Odom credit for this conversation. He said anti. So they want to kill Kanye. I said, what you mean? He said, if you take away a man's, a man, ability to earn, you literally kill him. This Lamar Odom interview that I'm dropping inside the Patreon is going to be crazy. If you're not a bag chaser, I got my own fucking Netflix out here. In addition to, in addition to all of the content that we're doing from a business perspective, leveling up, your budgets, all that type of stuff, starting your own business, all those videos, this is a Mark Odom interview. He said, and time. Let me tell you something, bro. He said, if you want to kill some a man, you want to destroy him, prevent he said, don't, don't say that you're wrong or whatever. He said, prevent his ability to be able to make money. Cut off his money, you kill him. I said, hello, you, you, you must be a part of the bag chasers. And, um, and I believe, uh, you know, Kyrie did um, cause some harm to a lot of people. Um, Kyrie um, caused harm to a lot. Yeah. Now, how does Kyrie cause harm to a lot of people by retweeting out a movie that's already on Amazon Prime that y'all not going at Jeff Bezos about? Jeff Bezos is still the biggest shareholder of Amazon, and I don't think he removed the movie at all. How does Kyrie, how do you cause a lot of harm? You know, I got a clip that I have not released to YouTube. Shout out to Aaron. Aaron says, think about it. They even made presidents fold. Every president has had to pay homage to their country. Bezos is more powerful than presidents. That's a fact. Thank you, Aaron, for the super chat. I got a clip from Charleston White. I got a whole hour and 54 minute interview. For those of you that watched it in the Patreon, you know this to be true. Charleston White said, dang, I can't even say it. I'm going to use the light version. He said, it's not wrong to dislike somebody. He used another word. He said, it's not wrong to dislike somebody or to not like what they do or not like. He said, I dislike pedos and I dislike liars and I dislike, uh, you know, these type of people that do this, that look, that just so happen to be white or just so happen to be this color or whatever, so on and so forth. He said, I dislike him, but he used another word, obviously. He said, you can't tell me what I can and can't dislike. And I want to release that, that clip as soon as I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it approved through YouTube. I got a representative now, so I can make a phone call. I'm trying to get it approved through YouTube. He said, where the problem would come in is when it actually translates into me doing something physically to somebody as a result of disliking them. He said, but you can't tell me what I like and not like. You can't tell me what I like and not like. And there's nothing physically that's been done to anybody as far as having the conversation, which is one of the problems that come along with censorship in the United States of America. But let's continue. Yeah, since uh, over the last, I think, today or was it yesterday, you apologized. Um, but he caused some harm. And, um, and I think it's unfortunate, but... I don't know. Um, I don't stand on um, the position to harm people when it comes to your voice or your platform or or, or anything. And so it doesn't matter um, what color your skin is, how tall you are. Uh, oh, not he for everybody. Like the Cash Dial song, she said he for everybody. He for everybody. No, oh, now he for everybody. Because before he was telling us what we should be for as far as Black Lives Matters and who we should vote for. And I know the president like him. So he, when the most powerful NBA player don't stand next to you, what does that say about us? Don't sit here and tell me about the unity within the black community. When you're, when you're so-called leader, the most powerful NBA player, the one that is marketed the most, the one that probably has the most sway, you know Kyrie Irving lost his Nike deal, allegedly? Nike suspended their deal with him? When the most powerful NBA player who advocated for and is standing on the people that came before him. You know, you know LeBron James is standing on the shoulders of Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and even other athletes before him? 
the Mike Tysons, the Muhammad Ali's. You know, you know whose shoulders he's standing on. When it's supposed to be a brother, don't sit here and tell me how it's how it's important for us to stick together. When LeBron will literally get on a podium and completely abandon his brother who he won a championship with. Charleston White said, and I got a clip again that I'm trying to get approved through YouTube to be able to, just a clip to be approved through YouTube to be able to release to the general public. He said, my mentor Pops told me, born in 1945, said you can't get nothing done by getting two black men to align together. Now, I would disagree with that because I believe that me and the bag chasers are doing some incredible things. He said, you can't get no progress to be made by keeping two black men together for an extended period of time because eventually they'll abandon each other. I can't wait to release some of these clips to y'all. Let's continue. What position you are in, uh, if you are uh, promoting or soliciting or, or, or saying harmful things to any community, um, that harm people, um, and I don't, I don't, I don't respect it. I don't, I don't, I don't condone it. So, LeBron James completely turned on his brother Kyrie Irving. Completely turned on his brother Kyrie Irving, and you know what they know. You know what they know, and when I say they, I'm talking about executives and the powers that be, because the chain of command goes up. Let me tell you what happens. When things happen, a lot of times, they say that, listen, I'm going to take away your ability to earn by divesting myself against you and saying that we don't want to do business with you anymore. And the way that they're easily able to do that is because all they have to do is replace you with somebody that will do what you're willing to do, but cheaper. It's a simple formula. 